So he gave up one run. Half the guys didn't even hit the ball in play, so you don't even need the fielders. That, that, to me, that was just like the most incredible uh, single game that he had this year. And then number one, I think everybody can guess what number one is. This is going to be my number one on my top ten year moments, Otani or not. Number five for me is part of that. He hit the longest home run of the year in Major League Baseball, 493 feet against Arizona, the future National League champion on June 30th. And when you watch, just like the pitcher throws it, and as soon as he throws it, even before Otani's swinging, you can tell he's like, I should not have thrown that there. And just as soon as Otani swings the bat, his head hangs. But again, doesn't just hit, but he also can hit harder than anybody. To, like, it doesn't make sense that he can do all of these things and is also the best at each individual facet of all of these things. It's it's kind of what, um, you know, just bl blows me away just every day with him. Four happened just three days earlier, June 27th. He's playing the White Sox on the mound. T to me, this was his best two-way game. Uh, there's a few options you can choose from, but to me, I thought this was the best one. Six and a third innings on the mound, one run, 10 strikeouts, and then at the plate, he goes three for three with two home runs. I mean, he literally alone, he could have played by himself, wins that game. More than half of the batters he faced didn't put the ball in play, and he drove in himself twice. So he gave up one run, half the guys didn't even hit the ball in play, so you don't even need the fielders. That, that, to me, that was just like the most incredible uh, single game that he had this year. Uh, obviously, you know, the White Sox didn't have a great year, but, uh, you know, reading some articles today about people worried about, like, does Otani really want to pitch? Does he, you know, want to maybe just become a hitter in a couple of years? It's like, why would he? He can just do things like that. So then number three, we talked about this a little just a minute ago, but Otani playing the Czech Republic. We have Andre Satoria, the electrician, throwing his worker to strike out Otani, which you wouldn't think would be included in like the best Otani moments, but that just blew up everywhere. And Otani being so gracious and the respect that he and the team showed coming out and cheering for the team. I've talked with a lot of players on the Czech Republic a lot, and they talk a lot about the Instagram post he made, just saying respect to them. Like, that meant so much to them. And then him wearing the Czech Republic hat on the flight from Tokyo to Miami, getting off the plane in that cap, and then the caps immediately selling out everywhere. Like, that just... I don't know what more you can say. Like the impact he, he made, the, the respect he showed his opposition, the, the joy he brought them, the fact that he met Satori and, you know, he got a signed jersey. It's just, um, you, you see the importance of Otani to the world and the world to Otani. You know, it's the other day I had to do an interview and, and the last question was, you know, if you could say anything to Otani, what would you say? And one of them was like, thank you for being just a great ambassador for baseball. And that's what he was. He was an ambassador to global baseball right there. And what what more could you want from the greatest talented player to, to ever step on the face of the earth? Every mo, I'm sure. I'm sure he plays. I'm sure he just plays that clip like on repeat. I would. I watch that clip all the time. So, and I wasn't playing. I just love that clip. Number two, two reasons. The doubleheader, I mean, what more could you want? His doubleheader performance uh, throws a complete game shutout. One hitter, a one hitter against Detroit. And then uh, nightcap and hits two home runs. The last time anyone did this was Rick Wise, the Phillies, on June 23rd, 1971. It's been 52 years since anyone did that. And uh, this was almost just like a normal day in the life for Otani. This was, this was nothing special for him at all. And then number one, I think everybody can guess what number one is. This is going to be my number one on my top 10 year moments, Otani or not. 
uh, Otani versus Trout and the World Baseball Classic. I mean, that was scripted. I don't know how it. I don't know how that happened. The two best players, teammates, amazing competitors, amazing friends, facing off the two, arguably the two greatest baseball nations. Game three, two count. The entire stadium is losing their minds. What more could you want to end the World Baseball Classic? Like this, this was all perfection. It felt like something out of a out of a comic book. It felt like something out of an old Western story. Uh, you know, Otani like wander. It, it, it just it, it it was. It's what we all sat down hoping would happen in in the tournament, and none of us actually thought would happen. And it did. And it it lived up to the moment. It's 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 just mind blowing. It's just completely just completely mind blowing. So uh, yeah, that that that's top moment for me of the year. No matter what kind of list we're making, that might be top moment for me ever in baseball. In all honesty, we're going to be talking about that the way we talk about like Babe Ruth's called shot and Willie Mays's like over the head catch in the '54 World Series. It, like it's it's going to become the thing of like myth, you know. When when we have grandchildren or they have children, that's going to be what they talk about, and you know it'll 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 feel like a, a tall tale of some kind. I think the pitch clock changed baseball forever this year. I think it's going to spread around the globe, and you know, in a season with Corbin Carroll, who I'm going to get to in a little bit. It was easy for Senga to get overlooked. 